Mam Kobodo. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chair. Good afternoon, uh, Mamu Commissioner. How are you? I'm very well, Chair, and yourself? We are doing all right. Thank you. Thank you. Are you uh, uh, on uh, presentation? We are uh, ready. The presentation has been loaded on Teams. Uh, I'm hoping that it is reflecting uh, for Thank all the you. honorable members. If you may you request, may request uh, uh, the people around you to start uh, <coughs> walking behind you. Uh, I will do so, Chair. Yes. Uh, we will therefore we will then hand over to you to give a highly summarized presentation uh, for the next uh, 15 minutes. And then we will give over to the ITB as well uh, 15 minutes to do so. Then we will engage in questions and uh, comments. And if you can try and uh, go through the questions also that were sent to uh, yourselves, uh, we'll appreciate that. Um, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, and good afternoon to the members as well. And just uh, uh, quickly to mention that uh, um, the pres uh, the, I have uh, uh, three members, uh, well, uh, four members of uh, additional members of the Commission on Restitution of Land Rights who are joining me, and that is uh, the Regional Land Claims Commissioner, Mr. Uh, Maputa, uh, Mr. Sanjay Singh, who is a, a service delivery coordinator, uh, Cindy Benyane, who is uh, the acting Deputy Land Claims Commissioner, and Francis McMenamin, who is responsible for finance. So um, we are. We have noted the 15-minute uh, time that you've allocated to us, and we are going to try and answer some of the questions that were raised as part of the presentation. And if there are any that we have not been able to respond directly as we present, because I saw that some of the questions are actually responded to in the presentation, we will then take um, uh, try and respond to, to those after the presentation. And um, so that I don't uh, waste any further time, uh, I will hand over to uh, Cindy Benyani to do the presentation. And Chair, just before I forget, again, we've got the DG of the department, um, DG Shabane, supporting us, specifically, specifically, again, because we are still uh, under program three of the new department. So there's always this gray area between us and the department because the DG is our accounting officer and we're still program three. So if you listened, Pumeza earlier on presented about us as a commission as well, but we are also presenting now separately so that we're able to give a, a clear um, understanding of where we are going. Uh, so I hand over now to Cindy Benyane, who's the deputy uh, to present um, our, 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 our strategic plan and APP. Thank you, CLCC. Can I continue? Yes, please continue. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, DG, CLCC, and uh, my colleagues, good afternoon. Um, to briefly just your volume is Your volume is off. My volume is on. My volume is on. Can you hear me? Yes. I still can't hear you. Other members yes, can hear me. It seems you are the only one who can't hear me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we are commission. We've got uh, uh, our, uh, our vision uh, is uh, to uh, ensure uh, effective, uh, efficient, and speedy redress, um, especially to victims of um, racially based land dispossession. Our mission is in line <coughs> with the provisions of the Restitution Act and we exist to provide these specific redress. If I go to the next slide, if you can just, Ralph, just go. We get our legislative mandate as an autonomous institution from the restitution of land rights. And uh, this also comes from our constitutional mandate from section 25.7. 
which basically states that a person or community dispossessed of property after 19 June 1913 as a result of past racial discriminatory laws. If we go to the next slide, um, this is just an indication how our constitutional mandate, our legislative mandate, our vision and mission, our strategic goals, our budget, all interlinked. So I'm trying to save on to the 15 minutes and I just want to basically go to the program uh, purpose to explain that we as the CRC have indicated the accounting officer is the DG and we contribute to the department's strategic plan and the specific strategic goal is equitable access to uh, and sustainable use of land for development promoted. Um, to go then to the next slide, I will basically touch on a number of strategic objectives we are focused on. The first one being land rights restored. We facilitate the restoration of land rights and alternative forms of equitable redress, as well as equitable land dispensation and agrarian reform. Our second um, objective is to solicit and receive new land claims. Obviously, we're not doing that now in line with the LAMOSA report, as well as equitable land dispensation and agrarian reform. Next one is our issues regarding improved governance and service delivery. In a previous meeting, we presented and spoke to you about Project WIASA. We are going through a process of organizational change management. This will basically contribute to a dedicated, loyal, result-orientated, professional and people-focused workforce. We have also uh, reviewed our expectations from internal and external customers, and we've got a strategic objective specifically to improve our customer satisfaction and communication with those inputs and reviews that we've received. Uh, and we will be focusing on communication and performance management plans to be properly communicated um, and also for us to promote the culture of openness and transparency. Next one basically is our clear organizational mandate. It's our strategic objective five and business process improvement. During uh, the previous meeting, when we did the Kuyasa presentation, we spoke to you about our operational processes that is in processes of being improved. We're going through Project Kuyasa, which is um, coming from the Operation Pakisa, those objectives and feedback that we've received as part of our business improvement processes. We are classified as a specialized service delivery unit as per the Public Service Act. We are just not operating as a specialized service delivery unit. And some of the issues that we will be implementing towards becoming a fully fledged uh, 3A public entity is working with the department and soliciting our various agreements via service level agreements as the DG still remains the uh, accounting officer. This will obviously assist the commission in the process of going towards autonomy that we get the necessary skills and expertise uh, and that we are not in a situation um, when we become a public entity. Um, then also our last one, we've, we are focusing on improved information and project management. As per the presentation previously presented, we have done quite a high level three, a business process is going through a compliance management process currently. And that will be the basis of the establishment of an end-to-end -end business system that will basically improve um, and be the claims management and electronic and information management system that we will use. And that will definitely improve our reporting, our responsiveness and promote service delivery. If I can go to the next slide, those were basically our strategic objectives. We do contribute and assign to the National Development Plan Vision for 2030. We play a key role towards rural economic transformation and the primary focus of the Commission still remain uh, elements of land reform program that will basically ensure sustainable and a rapid transfer of land to beneficiaries. Um, if I can just go to the next slide. 
this is chair basically just talking over the next five year period from 2020 to 2025 um, the number of claims we are looking at uh, as settling and we are saying collectively in total um, contributing to our outcome to redress um, equitable and equitable access to land we are looking at 2150 claims to be settled and 2,200 claims to be finalized. That is in line with the current capacity and budget allocation we've got, and not necessarily taking in consideration the improvements that Kuyasa will assist us with. Going to the next slide, I've presented this slide previously. It just talks about our backlog of pure outstanding claims. You will see it's in the region of about 7,700. Our highest province is KZN, followed by Mpumalanga and Limpopo, and the lowest, basically in Free State, with only five. Um, I will just briefly talk to the next slide, next two slides. We can go to the next slide, which is basically regarding the backlog reduction areas. You've seen what I've demonstrated is in a region of about 2,000 claims to be settled. This is about 7,000 that is remaining. So we are striving towards having a strategy that can accelerate, that we can do more, if not possibly all, as soon as possible. There are four key elements when it comes to our backlog reduction strategy. These are legal compliance. We must ensure that we comply with all legal prescripts we have to the standardization of our processes, because I've demonstrated and explained different provinces do things differently. We need to, need to reduce rework. Too many people in the system doing the same thing, and we need to reduce turnaround time so our output can be higher numbers of settlement. Okay. Chair, when it comes to the next slide, just to briefly explain, we have put, currently have all those projects that I've alluded to, the numbers, all um. projects in the region of 7,700. We've got a plan for every single project. We've got time frames for every single project. We are just basically what is an estimated cost. So when I can just hand over to Mr. Singh to talk to the rest of the slides. Be mindful you have three minutes remaining. Please conclude. Baba Singh, please continue. Baba Singh, please continue. Yeah, thank you, sir. Sorry about that. I was on mute. Apologies. Uh, your honorable chairperson, honorable members, the, the DG and CLCC. If you look at slide number 15, We've, okay, we've actually done an analysis there whereby we had an had initial target, if, if one looks at the column of 2021, of 454 claims to be settled in this financial year. And, okay, now that was before we entered the financial year. And, and after we got hit with COVID okay, in around about March, we had to review that 454 that was there. And the target that we have come to is, is to a figure of 244 for the settlement of claims. The column that you'll see, sir, is the, is, the, is, the, is the provincial target first and then the revised target. Now, our intention is to do the 454, all right? But because of the impact of COVID is where we are saying that there might be a bit of a hassle where we might have to reduce to 244 for the settlement. And the rationale or the reason for that is that in terms of the work that we need to do, it is a lot of engagement with people and communities in terms of doing verification, the signing of settlement agreements, a stakeholder analysis. So all those engagements will, will certainly have an impact in terms of our delivery. On the finalization of claims as well, we had initial target of 479. Uh, after, okay, with, with now the impact of COVID as well, we dropped it down to 295. Also citing now the issues of the signing of the settlement agreements and the engagements, the photocopies, the ID copies that we require from claimants, etc. And this is a breakdown in terms of a province as to what it looked like. If we move to the next slide, Ralph. Uh, here, okay, now here I've spoken to this, which speaks to the uh, 
the reasons as to why we had to relook at our targeting. So I'm not going to go into the detail of that again. Is it next slide, slide, uh, and Ralph? Yeah, that could, uh, this one as well. Yeah, can we go to the finance one now? Francis, are you around, ma'am? Just go. Okay. Go to the finance, down, down, yes, yeah. Good day, Chair. Um, just in terms of finance, um, you can see then on slide 18 that uh, for the MTF period, there's a total of 10.5 billion rand allocated to the Commission. For this financial year, we have 3.3 billion rand in total, of which 2.5 billion rand is allocated to go to um, projects. We can go to the next slide. Um, this is the um, breakdown per eco economic classification. So in, you can see there clearly what's our compensation of employees is 455 million for this year. Goods and services, 291 million. And that is the money we use to settle the claim. So that includes um, use of uh, uh, valuers and um, people who do uh, um, verification of claims. And then um, where we pay the claims from to purchase land and pay financial compensation is the household item, and that is 2.5 billion rand. Um, next slide, please. Okay, I think that's Cindy now. Just to basically talk about our plan towards autonomy. Um, we have done a business case, a draft business case is ready and it has been developed. We are in process of determining the operating costs and after that we will basically be sending the assessment of the business case to um, engagement with National Treasury and the Policy Department, Department of Public Service and Administration before the uh, sign of and formalization of the public entity and we are estimating that that will take about 14 to 18 months. We have also engaged with a state law advisor regarding any sort of legislative amendments that we require to the Restitution Act that is in process of being finalized. We are expecting that we will receive that the first draft in next week and then we will compile all the input mm -hmm. to the input get process and obviously as these things go you can take up to 18 to 30 months depending on what advice we will be receiving uh, for that to finalize if we can okay. just we conclude see how see if you can conclude um chair i think that uh, we have attempted to cover uh, most of the issues uh, that were, were raised that only issue i think including uh, the questions um the only one would probably be on the Lamusa um, judgment question to say that we are continuing to work with the uh, Land Claims Court in terms of submitting the reports as required. We are finalizing our second report as, re uh, as required. Uh, we just had some delays as a result of um, the lockdown, but uh, it's an, at an advanced stage. And uh, on the issue of when we, we plan to finish the outstanding uh, um, 1998 claims, we've already indicated that the backlog reduction strategy under GUIA seeks exactly to ensure that we're able to deal uh, with that. And uh, again, we've anticipated that at least by September, we will have finished with our backlog reduction strategy, which will then become the blueprint in terms of where and how we finalize um, the, the outstanding claims for the 1998 um, lot. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay. We have uh, the second presentation, DG of a Gonyama Transport. Chairperson, we expect the the chairperson of the board to to to, to link up uh, Chairperson uh, Judge Jerome Nguenya will be presenting on behalf of the ITP. Thank you. Do we have the judge with us? 
Judge Mwenya. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Let's go on. Yes, Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, honorable members. And deputy ministers and chairs of other uh, committees. It seems like uh, there is a delay, uh, Chairperson. I'm not here. I'm sure whether you can hear me now. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you, Chairperson. I have Mr. Sandy Lekabela, the acting uh, CEO, who will do the presentation. And I, in turn, will deal with the questions that we've already received and amplify part of his question. Uh, other than that, Chairperson, I have also other officials of the ITB. <clears throat> Ms. Ellis and Ms. Uh, Tava and Mr. Hiral Lal. I'll hand over to Mr. Cabela for now. Uh, thanks very much, Chairperson. Greetings to everyone. Uh, I'm not too sure whether the presentation has been loaded or I can share from my screen this side. Please share from your screen. Please share from your screen. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. I hope it is visible to everyone, Chairperson. We can we see it clearly. Thanks very much, Chair. We can see it clearly. <clears throat> Chair, our outline will look at the mandate of uh, ITP and IT, learn tenure right process, because there are some questions that arose that we felt that we needed to clarify that process. Then we'll zoom into the five-year strategic outcomes as per the request. And then we'll look at the budget 2020-21 for both ITB and IT. And then we'll provide some responses to the information requested on 29 April 2020 and the questions that has also since been received uh, with regard to our, our presentation. And uh, Chairperson, we just like to say ITP, as known as the Trust Board, uh, mandate is to um, administer the affairs of the trust and the trust land. Therefore, it's important for us then to explain what is meant by Ngonyama Trust. That is coming from the Zulu Homeland Act, which uh, Section 2.1, that reads as follows. It's a corporate body to be called Ngonyama Trust, hereafter referred to as the trust, is hereby established with a perpetual succession and power to sue and be sued, and subject to the provision of this act to do all such acts and things as bodies corporate may lawfully do. That is just a, a, a direct quotation from section two of the Venema Trust Amendment Act, Chair. Furthermore, Chair, we'd just like to, to, to further explain that the land that we are saying is in question owned by the trust has its beneficiaries, which are the members of various tribal communities uh, who are under the jurisdiction of those specified tribal authorities, which are listed in the legislation, and in total there are about 250 of those. Although the mandate is widely couched, in the main, the board has concentrated on land administration. It is also worth the while to make reference to the principal act Section 4, which reads as follows. The government of Gazulu and its successor in law shall out of funds in an annual budget voted for by its legislature provide for financial assistance to the Ngonyama as a trustee of the Ngonyama Trust to administer the trust. However, there then since there's been an amendment to the Act, so we refer now to Section 5 of the Amendment Act, which says that the Department of Land Affairs shall bear the Cost, the administration cost of the board. So we say these amendments have a far-reaching consequence in the manner in which the board operates to date. This is so because the amendment act restricts the funding to the administrative cost of the board. Therefore, there is no funding 
for the trust uh, by government. In brief, then we say this is how the trust and the board operate. Of importance is the acknowledgement that neither the trust nor the board are institutions of first instance. In this regard, we make reference to section 25 of the Amendment Act, which reads as follows. The Ingonyama shall not encumber, pledge, lease, alienate, or otherwise dispose of any of the said land or any interest or real right in the land. Then we underline that to say, unless he has obtained the prior written consent of the traditional authority or community authority consent, and otherwise than in accordance with the provisions of any applicable law. So there were, there were questions also around that, so we're trying to, to clarify that. Then we say, therefore, in practice and as a matter of law, when Yama Transport does not allocate rights to land, but give formal confirmation thereto. The rights then are then allocated by the traditional community authority, which is in main responsible for day-to-day -day land administration as well as conflict management. So, Chairperson, this is what we are depleting here as a, a picture now of the process that we've discussed to say the first step is where the individual will have to make the application to the traditional council, which is called TC. Therefore, from there, then it comes to Ingonyama Transport after they've agreed that which land has been allocated for confirmation. Then it goes to deeds office registration or to do some surveys via the surveyor general offices. So this is a duplication of the other slides put in a different way, Chair. Then, Chair, now we just zoom straight into the five-year strategic outcomes of um, ITP. We've got four. The one is uh, improved corporate governance and service excellence, where in the main we're looking at capacitating the TCs because we say they're the ones who are on the call phase. So if we can train them on land administration issues and also on the policies or laws applicable thereof, then they should be able then to assist. Secondly, we've got improved stakeholder relations. So we've got a number of stakeholders that we normally work with who like to use, make use of the land that is owned by the trust. So we want to have a lot of relationships that sign agreements between us and those uh, stakeholders. The third one is improved security of land tenure, where we're saying that the number of land rights approved by the board that will conform to all applicable legislation at the time. So we even say the will conform to the national legislation governing land tenure. In this regard, we make reference to Section 27 of the Amendment Act, notwithstanding the provision of this Act, any national land reform program established and implemented in terms of any law shall, shall, shall apply to the land referred to in Section 3.1, provided that the implementation of any program referred to Section 3.1 shall be undertaken in consultation with Ingonyam. So we're saying that you can then comply with, with, with all those laws. Then number four is the strategic uh, outcome was saying that we want to look at the improved coordination of human settlement on communal land. So we're trying to push to say TCs then must have what you call human settlement plans. That will also be done in conjunction with the departments that we will have agreements with as per 1.2 above, so that we can improve uh, the human settlements in our communal lands. This is Jefferson, the high level then on the annual uh, targets that you've got. If you look at um, the improved stakeholder, we've discussed that. Improved corporate governance, we've added now the issue of the improved audit outcome to say for 2021-2022, where 2020-2021, we would like to get unqualified audit opinion. So it's going to be improved from the current opinion and then up until we receive the clean audit as, as years progresses. Also, we feel that we do need to either amend, review, and create new policies that will govern how the organization uh, operates also going forward as part of the sound corporate governance there. We've got five uh, targets for this year. The issue of the improved land internal security, we've got 1,200 for this financial year. Then we've got the coordination of settlement uh, of uh, human settlements on criminal land. We say we're targeting about five of those uh, as a start because we're going to first have to train the TCs how to prepare, develop, and then thereafter we can be able to roll out fully these uh, human settlement plans. Chair, this is the budget of Ingonyama Transport. It comes to a total value of 52 million rand. And uh, 
we, we indeed submitted it to the department late sometime this year. According to the PFMA, it was supposed to be at least six months before the end of the financial year. Then we receive a response to say that uh, the appropriation has, has already been done in Parliament of 22 million rent. So it means then ITP will have to revise this budget to, to, to align to the appropriation which has been done by the Minister of Finance in, in Parliament. So we are busy with that process at the moment so that we can have an approved uh, current budget. This one, Chairperson, is a, a budget for Ingonyama Trust where we say the income that you envisage that you are going to receive is about 43 million rand. But then if you go and look at the program, then the expenses per program, community support is program number one, 7 million rand. Program number two, administration and, and corporate services. Then we're gonna also gonna have the, the land and then tenure management services. So the total then for the expenses comes to uh, an amount of 48 million rand, which then gives you a deficit of about 5 million rand in terms of our of our IT budget. So maybe on the ITP side of things then, because we have got a budget of 52 mil million rand, but you receive only 22 million rand. So we're saying that the deficit there then is the money that will come will come from the trust. That's what you are saying, in fact, in this in this slide. To say the board budget is deficit which gets pushed and must be made by the trust. That's what we are we are then saying there. So then, Chair, in, in, in conclusion, then there were information that was requested as additionally on 29 April. These are our responses before we come to the questions that were sent to us. I will try to be quick here, Chairperson, to say there was a request for a five-year account of lease fees collected by ITP. Our response then is saying that due to time constraint as well as the pending court case, this information is being prepared in consultation with the lawyers and is as yet to be finalized since it is part of the dispute in the pending matter. As soon as it is available, we'll provide same via the office of the executive authority. Similarly, with the how, how that money was used, so those two then are linked together. Then lastly, there was a, a question regarding our structure. So we are saying that uh, we do have a finalized macro structure that is being costed at the moment. Once all that has been finalized, then we're going to engage executive authority on, the, on that in terms of the structure and the costing and see whether it's get approval. But we suffice to say that we do have a micro structure that consists of, of a board and about 60 employees who are currently, currently working. Some of them are in contract basis, some of them are permanent, which are, are doing the work currently within, within ITP. So, Chair, then we'll try now maybe just to, to hand over to the chairperson of the board, maybe to respond to some of the questions that were, were put to us in writing. Thank you, Chairperson. 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 Uh, Chairperson. Uh, the, the question was, one was by the Honorable and our response Apologies. Uh, the question was, could Ngonyama Trust Board kindly explain the, what informs figures one and two in both program one and two? Our answer is that it is the details of the nature of the activity concerned, as well as the processes that are to be followed. It would be noted in our presentation in page seven, the, the slide which depicts that we, the board is not the first point of call, but it is the traditional council that are doing a lot of work. And the board thereafter provides the documentation and other technical services like the survey of the land in question, the leasing, the preparation of documents, including the registration of the lease if need be. Other question by Honorable Mtwedi says that uh, the presentation by Ngonyama Trust is incomplete. 
we do not understand. We need more information on that, Chairperson. Honorable Stain was the next with the annual report over three years. And she notes that there is an upset on the budget and she says in in 2019, the budget on land tenure administration went to 20.5 million. And that currently it is 113 million. We, are, we don't have those figures. Our figures are different as has been presented by Mr. Cabela. Mm -hmm. But but nevertheless, a fundamental question is, what is land tenure administration? <laughs> Our response is that this is a process of arranging land that is to be allocated, getting the appropriate cadastral description, Put the particular parcel of land on the GIS. Do the survey on the piece of land. And up to a stage where it is reflected in a deeds office with that cadastral description. That's how far we can respond as far as that is concerned. She further ask a question that uh, it was announced that the ITP spent 4.6 million rand on two community workshops. Without reading the whole question, Chairperson, all I need to indicate is that these were not community workshops. As it would be noted in page three of the presentation, there are 250 traditional councils. The easiest way sometimes, as we have agreed with uh, various traditional councils, is to meet all of them once per quarter. So there was only one meeting, not two, as you said, for that purpose. The other meeting was in preparation for a meeting with the Presidential Council on Land Reform. And that meeting did take place, but however, the members of the panel were not all there. But we did have the Provincial House of Traditional Leaders with us and other Amakosi. The other question is, it has emerged that ITP defaulted on its obligation to spend 90% of its income to beneficiaries and traditional councils. Chairperson, we noted this was in the press, but there is no such obligation for starters. And number two, we did not default. All we can refer the honorable committee to is to check the available finances as to how money that are distributed and also what are the obligations of the trust. Can we conclude, Judge? Thank you, Chairperson. The, the, the last one, maybe I should jump to the other questions that have just arisen now. I think it comes from Mr. or Ms. Temi Briet. The quest part of the question has been answered by linking to the The, the, the micro and macro structure are also dependent on the communal land bill 
what impact it will have, what the shape of the ITP will look like. Therefore, we need a detailed and informed discussion with the Executive Authority, the Minister. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Judge Nguyenya. Let us uh, welcome the presentation uh, of uh, the Commission, as well as uh, the presentation on the ITP. Honorable members, uh, we will now open um, this session for questions as well as uh, uh, discussions. I will take uh, two names uh, from the National Assembly and also ask uh, the Honorable Chairperson of the NCOP, Honorable Modise, to also raise two people. Then we will go in that uh, regard. Can I have uh, Honorable Kappa to be followed by Honorable uh, Masipa? Thank you, Honorable Chair. I'll have uh, only two questions. One is the one which I missed out in the earlier section, which I wanted to be assisted on mechanization. I was concerned that there is not, not much said about mechanization in the, in the assistance to the rural communities, which I understand and believe is the key in assisting those, those, those people. Uh, let, let me not elaborate on that. Now, the second question is just a clarity on ITB. I think it's uh, on page 15, or it's in program two. There, there's a four million for legal fees and a plus five million for doubtful debts. Just a clarity on those two and the justif justification of those two amounts. Mind you, you can you see that the, the four million of the local, local fees is close to the one for the board, for the board fees. Just those two questions, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Honorable Masipa. Uh, thank you, Honourable Chair. Um, I've got two question, questions, uh, one for the Commission and one for ITB. The one for the Commission, and I think this might be a repeat of the last question, um, with regards to the outstanding claims. They report sorry, about... Sorry. Masipa? Yes, Just sir. Excuse me. Can we have uh, all the Honourable Members mute their uh, microphones? We are picking up uh, uh, noises uh, of uh, their microphones. So please mute them. Thank you. Go ahead, Honorable Masipa. Okay, thank you, Chair. So my question is based on the outstanding claims of about 7,743. And uh, if I look at the revised uh, numbers that the Commission is looking at uh, targeting for this year, 295 so it will take the commission roughly 26 years to finalize uh, uh, the rest my just uh, observation is that shouldn't the department really consider engaging some of the stakeholders you know in the industry to assist them with the process of the um, the um, the land claims and uh, assisting them to speed up i know that uh, they have presented the guiasa the last time but, you know, our concern, and as a committee, we should be concerned because, you know, there's no progress that is going to made as much, you know, in the next couple of uh, months, up to a year, we don't know. But I think um, it is important that maybe the, the commission consider even bringing some of the stakeholders in the industry. The second question um, is to ITP. Basically, they exist, uh, the, the board exists to really empower the communities and i think this question is related to what are the programs that the itb is to is doing to empower the youth in the in the rural villages and what budgets um, have they allocated in the past couple of years i'll really appreciate uh, that uh, the board can just give us some 
uh, answers on those questions. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Modise. Any members from the NCOP? Thanks, Honorable Chairperson. I will uh, call Honorable Mgwenya to ask a question. Honorable Mgwenya? Seems he's not there. Honorable Mgwenya? Let me pass and uh, go to Honorable Smith. Honorable Smith? Honorable Smith, uh, it seems they are not, uh, I can't get them, hold of them. Okay, Honorable we'll Smith. come back. We'll come back to those honorable members. Let us proceed, uh, Honorable Chwete. The Honorable yes, Chwete there, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, who Mr. Sandile Kabela is an acting CEO of ITB. Um, I've been going through the, 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 the reports, Chair, that are submitted to the committee. And also read that Ingonyama Trust has not been allocated its annual budget amount, the transfers. Now, Chair, I would like to know just for interest sake, Chair, how long has the acting CEO, the current one, been acting on that in, in that capacity, Chair? Uh, I think, Chair, it will clear a lot of questions that I have, but due to time, due to the time frames of this meeting, um, 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 I just need that. And, Chair, according to the National Treasury frame, Framework, on strategic plans and annual performance plans. It is important that strategic plans and APPs are linked to a budget that ensures that key objectives and priorities um, are budgeted for and are achieved. But Chair, in this presentation, the board, there are no budget allocations in the APPs that are presented to us for the board. Can the board explain to us why it has not included these budget allocations in the APPs, Chair. The other question, Chair, that I have is that there's been reports in the news that two top executives have been suspended since January 2020, making a total of six executive members of the board has been suspended since last year. Can the board provide EEE reasons for the suspension and how far is the process of investigation? The last question that I have, Chair, the other question that I have for the board, is service delivery performance. Their service delivery performance in 2019 and tw for 2019 and 2020, the board did not achieve its, 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 its targets, Chair. That, that speaks to the mandate of the board. The, one of those mandates is to support or capacitate this traditional council in the second quarter. None of these have been achieved. Can the board explain to us why is that? To my, disappointed, to my disappointment, Chair, the board does not even have any targets for women, youth, and people living with disability. That is a great concern. The other question, Chair, the second last, what is what informs the decision to plan to approve 1,200 tenure rights in 2020 and 2021? And Chair, can how many of these 1,200 tenure rights that the board is is, is planning to, 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 to approve? How many are these residential leaseholds? Can we get that, Chair? If they do not have those questions, those, 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 those answers now, can we get that in writing, Chair, as soon as possible? Um, the, last, the last comment, Chair, that I have, it is of great concern, Chair, that this entity is not allocated its budget. 
the last meeting that we had, the AG, the Auditor General report had its own recommendations. Now, Chair, I, 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 I would like to know to the board why they did not submit the documentation that was needed by UAG. Should we, based on the, 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 the can you hear me, Shana? Yes, we can hear you. Can you conclude? Oh, okay, Chair. Now, Chair, I would like to conclude, Chair. It is really concerning me. It's as if I'm breaking up, Chair. No, you're not. We can hear you clearly. Oh, Chair, on the issue of the Ingonyama Trust that did not submit each budget plans to such, in such that the department withhold or suspended its allocation for the year, it is of great concern, Chair, as an ended, because they did not submit their, 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 their required documentation or, or, or reports. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, Chair, thinking, okay, why should we continue? Why should they be allocated the budget how far are they in submitting the 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 the, the, the reports or the plans that it, it is needed chair? thank you i do have a follow-up question chair. i just hope we have time all right thank, thank you. you honorable matthias wow matthias yeah baba Wandiva, baba anyway. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Please go ahead. Okay. I've got two questions to the Lent and Restitution Commission. One is whether the Commission has calibrated its land restitution program to be in line with the process of the Constitutional Amendment of Section 25. That's the first question. The second question is whether out of 444 land claims that are outstanding in Gauteng province, given the, the, the geograph geographic realities and other dynamics such as urbanization and all of that, if these 441 claims were to be successful and should claimants decides to opt for land and, and not money. What plans are in place? What is it that the commission intends to do should people opt for land and say, we want this piece of land to farm it, given the generation rate or- Committee should be approving if tabling is expected. The management of Ngonyama Transport seems from the media reports that we have been re uh, uh, receiving, it has been reported that uh, the management has been suspended in its entirety, particularly the executive management factor. We have the Commission on the Restitution on Land Rights, which has not tabled its own annual performance plan and this has uh, posed some questions on its own autonomy. Its mandate is covered under program four with two strategic objectives. Yet the PowerPoint slides titled Strategic Plan, Annual Performance Plan and MTEF Allocation lists six strategic objectives. Yet there are only two outcomes, i.e. the settlement of land claims and the finalization of land claims. This makes it difficult for the committee to track progress on how the commission seeks to improve its governance and service delivery. No outcome indicators have been listed for this. 
during the public hearings, which I had the privilege of attending on the amendment of Section 25, many people were complaining about the lack of information about land claims. Yet there are no outcomes indicators for the customer satisfaction and communication. The process to achieve transition uh, to an autonomous entity remains a talk. The so-called APP seems to have not given confidence about plans to ensure that it is achieved. And lastly, honorable members, the APP fails to integrate the project Kuyasa outcomes, i.e. the outcome indicators to formally report, which one says so because the only APP tabled, the one of the departments which has been mentioned is only of two indicators for settlement and finalization of land claims. Issues of research, verification and stakeholder engagements are not included. And I would like uh, to receive reasons for this. Are there any other honorable members that have not uh, been able to pose questions? Yes, Chair. Honorable Clapper. Chair, my questions are, are directed to the Ingonyama Trust Board. Yes, go the, ahead. Yes. On the document that they submitted, not the high-level presentation that they just done, page six of the of their document indicate or list four policies and legislative provisions that they assert that those legislation are prejudicial to the trust. The board also indicates that if they are not going to be reviewed, they are left with no option but to seek uh, legal remedies in courts. My question, Chair, on this one is, what is it that the, the, the board is doing to make sure that they amend those sections or have they approached the department on that? On page eight of the same documents, Chair, the internal environment factors I think this is their sort of analysis. The board also indicates that have the Ngonyama Trust not been there, people living in communally uh, land, in communal land will be homeless. Here they're talking about communal land management, the rateability thereof. I want to get more clarity. What do they mean if they say, have it not been about the Ngonyama Trust? these people that are living in communal land will be homeless. The last question, Chair, targets on capacity building. The indicators this time, they bring in 50 traditional councils. Honorable Masipa has touched on this one of the youth. Last time when we engaged with them, we expressed ourselves fully on the issues of bazaaris. And the uh, response was, they did not get a request. Have they abandoned capacity of the youth? Have they abandoned providing batteries for the youth? Those will be my questions. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Can we have uh, honorable stay? Are you covered? Yeah, no, Chairperson. Um, my question would be regarding the um, the commission, we were told that uh, COVID has had an impact on the uh, strategy. So what um, further impact will it have on the backlog uh, reduction strategy? Did they take that into consideration to move it now to September to give us that backlog reduction strategy? Um, also, what would be the main reasons for the for the huge uh, 3,400 outstanding claims in, in KZN? Um, is there a specific issue in KZN that, that needs um, further attention? Chairperson, then, um, I see the minister is back. Um, I was informed today that the deeds registration offices were supposed to be open 
uh, during uh, level four, they apparently still closed. Can we find out uh, what is the reason for that? And then when they will be opening? Um, um, and then, uh, Chair, can we just find out from the Ingonyama Trust um, how much of the Ingonyama Trust land has actually been surveyed? Uh, do we have a, a percentage or, or the hectares? And then just my last one, Chairperson, I'm concerned because I see in the department's um, uh, presentation, the, one of their first pages, they said 72% of agricultural land in South Africa is still in the hand of white farmers. Um, why is that in the, um, the, the department not take the land reform process into consideration? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Stein. Is Honorable Mudise there? Yes, sir. Honorable Chair, I would like to call Honorable B, Honorable Nana, followed by Honorable Machibe. They have questions. Okay. Honorable Mudise, before uh, they come in, I would like to hand over to you to uh, conclude this session and uh, carry on. As a Muslim, I will uh, now have to go break my fast as we have been fasting for the day. So as per our arrangement, please go ahead with the meeting and conclude uh, the session at six o'clock. Okay, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Honorable uh, Bibi, are you still okay, thank you. Yes, I'm still here. Can't you see me? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Honorable Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. No, I think I'm covered by um, Honorable Busi Chwete of the question, of the two questions that I was going to ask. Oh. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes. Thanks, Honorable Bibi. Okay. Uh, I don't want to repeat. Honorable Nana, do you still have questions? Honorable Nana? Or you are still struggling again? Okay. Let me go to Honorable Matibe. Honorable Matibe? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. I've got two questions. The, the the first one is on the land commission. We, uh, we have got three three provinces. If if you can allow me, chair, of the one question. Hello. Don't don't yes. disrupt him. Yes. We, we we have got three provinces that have got. Allow uh, honorable Matibe to Honorable Matibe. Thank you very much. We have got three provinces that have got the uh, highest number of uh, land claims that are not resolved. Uh, one of them is Limpopo with 1,192. Um, I, I would like to check, in terms of the strategy, I, I see this, the, the, the commission is indicating that they have not yet finalized the strategy. And um, my input will be... Uh, can the strategy look at those provinces with the highest number of uh, claims that are not resolved? I see KZN, Mpumalanga, as well as Limpopo. In terms of the Ingonyama transport, the, in terms of their budget, I see the compensation of employees amounts to more than 65%. How, do, how are they going to mitigate that so that... Uh, most of the budget that is there is uh, uh, given to service delivery. Thank you very much. Can I come in, Chair? Hello? Yes, Chair, can I come in? Come in. Can I come in, Chair? Yes, you are welcome, ma'am. Oh, thank you very much. Chairperson, uh, let me take this opportunity and greet everyone there. My input here, or my question, will it, it is not be a question, or, uh, though, but uh, it's something that I wanted to understand because it seems like as if I missed something because of uh, 
the problem of network. The department mentioned uh, the integrated growth and development plan, IGDP, and the draft national public on the comprehensive producer development support. Therefore, Chairperson, I would like to understand some of those policies that are, are guiding in the commercialization program. We didn't see them clearly on how they are going to be implemented, but I, I would suggest that the department to help us on that. But it also, should also indicate the status of the, the IGDP, which is, is, previ is previously reported that it has been replaced by the strategic framework, which they've been talking about it today on agriculture, forestry, and fishery. As we know that the fishery is no longer part of us, but we want to understand somewhere, somehow, how is it going to be implemented or approved by cabinet? How are they going to be able to, to help us to understand really on that? Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Member. Uh, Yes. Yes. Any member who would like to pose a question? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I did not sponsor questions to the Ingonyama Trust for the simple reason that. We were at one point told that uh, the president has established an interministerial committee to deal with the issue of Ingonyama Trust. I just want to check with the minister uh, uh, on how far are they in terms of dealing with the issue of Ingonyama Trust because the issue of Ingonyama Trust remains a very serious problem where you read that. Uh, on, on paper, it reflects that communities are benefiting from programs of Ingonyama Trust when they do presentations to us as a committee. But in reality, there's a serious concern in terms of how are community benefiting through this Ingonyama Trust. I just want the minister to take us to, and, and to confidence what is happening with regard to that because we are unable to uh, process Okay, thanks, Honorable Mundredi. Uh, any member? The last one. Ma'am, Honorable Briet. Honorable Briet. Yes, we are welcome, Honorable Briet. Thank you, Madam Chair. Maybe just um, two questions to add on to a colleague um, regarding um, the Commission. Um, will there be any financial implications with regard to um, COVID-19 and the fact that, that land claims um, are, are now delayed in that, in, in that regard? And to the ITB, I would just like to pose a question. On page 11, they do state that they are planning to receive a, a clean audit opinion, but I see no mention of their audit improvement plan. And I would just like a clear identification. Where are they in, in, in implementing their audit improvement plan and um, can they highlight that and maybe share that with the committee thank you chair uh, thanks to chair the network will have taken me out but i did hear you chair, calling my chair. name i didn't understand what i'm saying okay, okay. i was do out have... i hear you calling me do, do you have a question honorable Nguenya? I don't have a question, sir, uh, Chairperson, because I was out. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, any I have one. Get, get in. in. Question? One for you. Before I give, uh, before I give to back to the Land, land Commission and the Mgonyama uh, Trust and back to the Minister. Anybody yes, would pose a question? Yes, Chair. Yes, ma'am, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Um. Chairperson, uh, as much as um, we have had the presentations, I I missed just a little bit that the DDG, when we, you was talking about 1,650 CPAs that are registered, uh, I just wanted to understand what uh, are measures that are in place to, re, to, 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 to reduce 
the conflicts that are there as a question that was also sponsored by my other honorable when he was saying there are a lot of uh, uh, problems in the CPAs. What quality management system that we have put in place to make sure that we help these SCPAs uh, for them to can be able to manage those farms and also the issue of vandalization of those farms. So what is it that the, the department is going to do? Uh, even if they don't have a, a response today, we'll suggest that they come back to us and, and let us know what is going to happen because definitely sure things are not uh, uh, well out there. Lastly, the issue of the small hold, uh, the small holder farmers supported, which are 27. Can the department also help us with um, the place, the, the list of those 27 farmers they're talking about, and also the places so that when we come uh, to oversight as members of parliament, we can be able to know where to go. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, honorable member. Anyone? Let me take... Um, I can come in again, Deboho? Yes, last chair. Hello, Sorry, Honorable uh, Mundu. Okay, Mundu. Honorable Mundu. The, the last question from me, Chair, is uh, the last time we received a presentation on Ingonyama Trust, we were told that uh, the CEO was on suspension. And there was an acting... You are not audible, uh, Honorable Montredi. Honorable Montredi. Honorable Montredi. Honorable Montredi, are you still there? Chair, he has made mention earlier on our um, WhatsApp line that he has been having network issues. So I assume that we have lost him again. Are there any member who would like to ask a question? Honorable members, are you still there? Yes, chair? we are here. We are here. Yes. Yes, yes, Chair. Can yes. can we allow the um, uh, the department to answer the questions, and then if we've got follow up questions, we will definitely do. Okay. Uh, let me give to back to the department and the commission and uh, the board to answer the questions that were posed by the honorable members. Land, uh, the Land Commission. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, just wanted to check whether the Minister uh, wants to make any comments before I can answer, if that's okay with you, Chair. Minister will wrap up. Okay. I'll thank come again. Yes. Thank you very much, um, Chair. Um, from uh, the Commission, uh, I'll try and answer the questions, and uh, Francis will assist me with the financial uh, one. Uh, we, uh, number one, would uh, speak about the uh, APP, uh, just again to confirm that um, the disjuncture is that uh, the Commission is still under program three of the department, and in terms of the Restitution Act, the Director General um, of, of uh, uh, the land uh, department of land, uh, rural development and land reform is still responsible for um, the, the commission. So our strategic plan is that of the department. And we, in terms of the department, have got two key indicators, which are the, uh, the settling of land claims and the finalization. Those are the two. But what we did in our presentation was to provide additional information as requested so that um, uh, we were asked around um, uh, our interventions as a result of COVID, uh, what are the other things that we're doing, which uh, appear in fact in our operational plans. Uh, but just I, I confirm again that I think that the challenge, which is a gray area, is the fact that 
we are program three of the department. And so when the de department submits, they submit in, including an APP for the commission and the and, and strategic plan. Um, in terms of the question uh, around whether we have uh, calibrated ourselves to uh, the, the issues, the discussions around the expropriation, uh, just uh, to indicate that um, the commission uh, already operates um, really uh, guided by section 25 of the constitution and we also have as part of the restitution act um, section 42e which allows um, for expropriation so we always then have to look at um, the constitution look at the restitution act but also take into account the expropriation act as it stands but also noting the pro progress that has been made by the department of public works around the uh, expropriation bill as we've indicated in the past we have expropriated as early as 2002 and we continue to do so where it is necessary uh, so i would say that yes we are very uh, cognizant of uh, the discussions as they they progress Secondly, on um, the 441 uh, uh, claims outstanding in Gauteng province, uh, on the question on what would we do if they would choose for, they would opt for, for land, we have instances where uh, communities in Gauteng have opted uh, for land. So we continue to um, allocate uh, per determination of the claimants themselves and if the land itself is available, we then restore the land to the community. And if it's not uh, restorable and they are asking for land, we've got uh, options to provide alternative land if there is land that is available in the area. And um, so we then would have to work with our uh, stakeholders, uh, our department and other departments. Uh, for example, we've got some claims that are on conservation land, uh, which we restore, but we have to work closely with the Department of Environmental Affairs. So we'd continue to do that. Um, so we do anticipate that some claims in Gauteng will be land restoration. And we uh, then have to ensure that plans are in, in place for post-settlement initiatives, which will be carried out by the department and other stakeholders. Uh, the, the issue around whether uh, we will take a long time to settle the outstanding um, uh, claims, the 1998 claims, I think what we have indicated is that as part of the Pakisa, I mean of the Kuyasa project, we have acknowledged that we need to have a backlog reduction strategy which is comprehensive and is able to finally give clear an indication of what timelines would be uh, uh, practical and what would be the cost for us to fast track the settlement of those claims. So we have said that we anticipate that by September, we should have the backlog reduction strategy, which should be able to tell us exactly how long it would take for us to finalize these claims, bearing in mind that it would have a cost uh, implication. If you look at, for example, the last five years uh, of budget allocation for the commission, which was around 3.2 billion and above, we have expanded our budget every year since. And so we would have to make sure that our backlog redu reduction strategy is supported by uh, National Treasury as well, because it will have a cost implication. Because if we settle, uh, if you look at the baseline in general, the number of claims that we settle per year and the fact that we finish our allocated budget every year, if we are going to um, condense uh, the settlement of these outstanding claims, we would then uh, need additional uh, resources. But we are saying that we don't want to thumbsack, which is why we're saying that the backlog reduction strategy should be able to assist us to finally be able to define exactly. We also are cognizant of the fact that the three highest provinces are KZN, and Limpopo and Pumalanga, and uh, we are targeting those and uh, we are putting up uh, mm -hmm. intervention to be sure exactly um, which uh, areas as in districts these claims are, are from 
at what stage of the process they are at and what it is that we need to do. This is work that we are continuing to do. Um, the, the issue of um, uh, the COVID-19 um, and the implications, um, I will uh, ask for Francis to give a little bit of more detail, but to say that we have uh, reworked our, 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 our projects in view of, the, of COVID-19. What we have been able to understand is that our work is not desktop and requires a lot of interaction, especially with claimants and other stakeholders around, for example, when we pay, make payments uh, of, of grants uh, in terms of, I mean, payments for, for, for the beneficiaries. Some have to go to the bank, but before they go to the bank, the settlement agreements have to be signed by each individual. When we do transfer of land, we have to have community resolutions, and this requires that there is sometimes face-to-face. -face. We are looking at alternatives, but we have said that we're looking at the claims that have already gone through the business process that we can tackle. And so the, the, the rework numbers are, are, are the minimum. So we are not targeting the minimum, but we're saying the minimum would be the, 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 the target that we've indicated, but we are still wanting to work on all of the claims as identified in the APP. Yeah. Uh, but we are just anticipating challenges, and uh, but uh, we're looking for alternative ways to deal with those challenges. No, thanks, ma'am. Thanks, ma'am. Ma I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to check whether is there any question that I have not um, uh, answered. Yes, 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 um, yes, there is. There is a question that you didn't answer. On, yes, you know, yes. What are uh, two entities? To the two entities, please, uh, we, we request you to respond in writing all the questions that have been asked by honorable members in writing, even though you have answered uh, others. The very same answers that you gave us, you must give the, in writing. We request that you do that, ma'am. No, teacher. Hello, chair. Yes, sir. Mat Honor Matthias here. Honorable member. Yes, uh, there's a question that uh, since non Fundo did not answer. That's why, that is why I said to her, she must put in writing, she must respond in writing, all the questions, she because there are okay. many. Okay, but she many that she might have not. She might have not taken note of it. She might have missed that question. Can I repeat no, she miss it? The secretariat uh, have the, all, all those questions. They will send to uh, to the department. I mean, to the entities. They will do she that. Would, she would not have omitted it if, if she noted it. The secretariat secretariat are there. They will assist in writing those questions and send to the entities. So that they must respond. Why? Why do we have to avoid this question? Does it is it been avoided because it talks about amendment of the section twenty five of the constitution? We need no, answers now. No, 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 we need, no, no. We need an answer. Now. We are asking whether the department or this commission has calibrated its program to be in line and also to take into consideration the uh, constitutional amendment process in respect of land restitution. That's the question we're asking. You will answer them in, in writing, ma'am, that question? Uh, I think that's, that's a question that would be for the minister. Oh, yes, thanks. Uh, let me give the Nguenyama trust. The board, uh, the board is still there. Or can I pass to the department? Thank you, Chair. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson, uh, can I speak? Can you, hello? Yes. Is, is it the board? Yes. OK. Yes. 
Chairperson, I noted that uh, you have directed that uh, even what we respond here orally need to be reduced to writing later on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, because there, there is a problem of signal. Some of the members, they, they send me an SMS that they can't get, they don't hear you. They have no, a problem are, of signal. No, 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 we don't. We will do that. But I'm saying, therefore, I will summarize my questions because of time, my answer. Please say, please say, do that. Uh, I think what is important, uh, Madam Chair, is to yes, understand sir. what the legislation says on Ngonyama Trust Board. In section five of our presentation today, in page five rather, we try to quote the old OJA legislation which creates Ngonyama Trust. It provided that the funding of the trust was to come from the government of the time. The Amendment Act reduces that to say the Department of Land Affairs shall bear the cost of the administrative administration of the board, that's all. In other words, there is no funding for any of what is referred to as service delivery and any project. It is for that reason that even the budget that is currently withheld from the minister right now for reasons that it was submitted late, it would only have been 22 million rand. Goyama Trust Board has never received an amount higher than that. The, the current staff cost alone of 60 people is more than 22 million rand. I'm answering this so that it could be understood why the project, whether about the youth, women, etc., cannot be there without any money. The other question related to legal fees. Currently, there is a case in the High Court where the mandate of the Ngonyama Trust is challenged in a nutshell meaning that the trust and the board should not give any instrument on land and therefore must not receive any money from the users of the land. Nobody to this day has ever given an indication what is the, what should the source of income be for the Ngonyama Trust or Ngonyama Trust Board? We will then leave the matter in court, but why, what I was explaining was that the legal fees, among others, are to look for that case. The question as to when the acting CEO started acting, The answer is in February 2020, when there was no budget submitted to the minister for the first time in the history of the ICD. Furthermore, the issue between the ICD and its personnel who are currently on special leave, not on suspension, is now a matter before the court. We can say no more than what we're saying for now. Therefore, by explaining the, the legislative constraint, 
I was trying also to answer the question why there is no budget that is linked to the APP program. Furthermore, with regard to interministerial committee, I'm not privy to the information there. I did not get Madam Stain with regard to the percentage of savage land, but all I can say is that more than 99% of Ngonyama Trust land is not savage as we speak. With regard to the question about audit improvement plans, Yes, they are not here, unfortunately, but they are part of our operational plan. We will provide that in our responses and writing. So the number of questions that followed Honorable Crete with regard to how long has the CEO, acting CEO, been acting? I think I've tried to answer some questions like why there are no budget links. Certainly because there is no funding for that coming from anywhere. This sitting honorable chair can note that with 22 million rand from the state. There's hardly anything serious that can be done. But also I want to emphasize why we emphasize that we're not at point of first call. We interface mainly with the traditional council. Therefore, we don't have of our own problem for women and youth, but we believe that the TCs should have that duty. Then the rest chairperson, because I was run, writing fast, I will follow up once the questions have been cleared by the secretariat and then we will respond in writing. But certainly, like I said, no employees on suspension from our books, but they're on special leave. But we can give no further information why the matter is in court. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, for responding to questions, and the, the rest of the questions that you didn't uh, respond to, you will put in writing and send to uh, secretariat. And honorable members, if you still have any question, we will uh, give to our secretariat uh, questions they must send to both the uh, entities and to the department because, because of time. Now I'm going to request or to check whether our deputy ministers that are here, uh, deputy minister Squasha, deputy minister Damin, do we have anything to say? Our deputy ministers? <laughs> deputy ministers, before, before I give to back to the minister, I want to speak. I'm speaking. Are you honorable Can Squasha? I speak? Honorable yes. Squasha? Oh, yes. You Can you hear me? Honorable. Yes. Can I speak? Speak, honorable Squasha. Oh, okay. No, thank you very much. I want to speak before the minister speaks. Yes. 
Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity. I just briefly, because I see that we don't have time, on the issue that was raised regarding the, what is the, it's, it was a question by Honorable Marshall and Honorable Zabekul on the CPAs. What is the department doing? We've always been having ongoing work around that particular issue. And the department has deliberately put aside plans and a budget to address the challenges faced by CPAs. And in the last while, even a, a facility was appointed to go throughout, and it was very active in the Northern Cape, to try and address problems related to the CPAs. But I must say that in spite of the department's noble attempts, I think the whole of South Africa should be united in trying to address the problems facing the CPAs because they are much deeper than what the department on its own can do. The second one, Chair, quickly is uh, the, the issue I thought that Honorable Novundo had addressed, maybe the minister will, will finish with it, from Honorable Matthias. I think we must understand that government and this department has never postponed the delivery of land to our people. It is not something that is going to start with the amendment of Section 25. And so it's an ongoing process. Since the advent of the new constitution, Section 25 allows our government to deliver land to, to, to our people. And then the very last one, Chair, is <clears throat> I just wanted to profoundly apologize because it seems that there was some misunderstanding when I was called upon to say something earlier. I don't know what happened. So I wanted to forward an apology for that. But if allowed, can I respond to what I was supposed to say then? Yes, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister. Yeah. I, I think it was the issue of uh, the, 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 the That particular issue that was raised by Honorable Papama and <clears throat> the issue of, it's not a matter of the department refusing to recognize a particular CPA. As you will see in our written response, it's not a matter of a, a group of few people gathering and calling themselves as CPA that then the department allows them. There are compliance mechanisms. And that those people who call themselves a CPA are not complying in relation to what should be called a CPA. And the DG therefore cannot give such a status. But the issue is broader than that particular issue of those, of those people. There are different communities, and it has a very, very long history as it will be seen in the narration that will be a written response. Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Squasha. Honorable uh, Dlamini, Deputy Minister Dlamini. Okay, uh, now I'm going to give to... Are you, are you there, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister? Okay, Honorable Minister, can you Thank wrap up? Thank you, Honorable Modisa, and thanks to all the members for engaging with us on the strategic plan and the APPs that were presented. I just want to confirm, because there was a question earlier on by Honorable Mandela, the Ingonyama Trust Board did present their APPs and it was tabled in Parliament. The only thing that was not there was the budget. They did present their APPs and it was tabled in Parliament. The only thing that was not there was the matter. Honorable Modisa and members, I also want to just respond to the issue raised uh, and answered to by um, Mayor Koboto from Honorable Matthias. There were two questions he asked. One of them was whether are we calibrating our work with the work that is being done 
by Parliament in respect of the amendment of Section 25. I just want to indicate that, yes, we are keenly awaiting what the outcome of that process is going to be, because for us it will clarify the just and equitable compensation as it is enumerated as one of the elements in the Constitution. The second thing it would also clarify in what instances land expropriation without compensation can take place. Because these are the matters that we've been frustrated about, particularly with regards to the work of the OVG. Because in most instances, when the OVG does the calculation, there's always been questioning about the modalities used and whether or not such represent just and equitable as it is defined in the Constitution. But also, as the Honourable Member knows, that the Expropriation Act actually is an instrument that lies with the Department of Public Works and therefore Together with the work done by Parliament in respect of the amendment of the Constitution, the other important legislation is that Expropriation Act, which will give an indication how this expropriation for, you know, for equitable redress will be undertaken. As we know that at the moment, what is covered by the, by the, the current legislation is expropriation for public purpose, not in the public interest. On the other matters, uh, Honorable um, Matebe raised related to the issue of the claims that are still remaining. I just want to say that in addition to what uh, Ms. Gobodo has said, with the backlog strategy, reduction strategy, that will still be indicative in a sense because some of the matters are not really at the hands of the Commission, but it depends on the time that landowners themselves assist us in entering into negotiations where their land may be under claim. Those that are under state land, we've been able to find a mechanism on how quickly those claims can be resolved. The other matters, Honorable Chair, we will respond in writing as we have directed. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, are you still there? She is muted, I see. Oh, hello. Let me we can hear you now, Madam Chair. Yes, I'm closing the meeting now. I'm taking this opportunity to thank the department and the entities that presented uh, the very good uh, strategy plan and annual plan to us. Now mm -hmm. we, are, we are saying, Honorable Minister, go back to your department and put your tongue in practice. We know very well that your department is one of the departments that is doing very well, that is taking care of our, wow. the poor, the poor, of the poor. The, so um, with these uh, few words, we are saying thank you very much. We will continue to do oversight over the department and entities as it is our uh, responsibility to do that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. This meeting is attended. Thank you. Hello. Thank, thank you, you Madam. Yes, the meeting is attended. Uh,